Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now, the last couple of videos I've done have given Blizzard a little bit of that across the side of the face, and not a lot of that. And uh, rightfully so, can I just say. But in today's video, I wanted to do something a bit more positive for us, for us as players. I wanted to show off two different areas in the game, in the outside world, which I personally think are absolutely gorgeous. One is going to be in Kul Tiras, and the other is going to be in Zandalar. And this one I'm going to show you first is just an area that gets my own personal creative juices flowing just by what I can see. And the second area is an area that I think has been designed so cleverly that the creativity is there for you to see in all manner of shapes. Uh, but we'll get to that soon enough. So, with that said, I want to bring up on the map where I am. So you can find exactly uh, this place in the game, should you wish to visit it yourself. And I'm on my Horde character. Not that that means anything. It's just that it was more convenient for me to arrive here and come up. Because lazy. So, I've come up the side of the Horde base... And this here, coming up right now, boom. This area, to me, is just utterly, utterly gorgeous. Now, full disclosure, I am a country boy. I am a country bumpkin. I love to live in uh, rural areas. I've lived in Yorkshire pretty much all my life. I don't like urbanized areas. I prefer to live in small villages, towns, places like that that are very close to the countryside. It's just the way that I've always been, probably because I grew up in a similar place. And this area here just reminds me so much of that. First of all, we have the lovely sight when you come over the crest of the hill. Uh, this fantastic waterfall leading down here, and it comes into this pond-esque area which has this beautiful rustic bridge just going across it. Even when the sun goes and you can uh, see the raindrops begin to fall, it doesn't take away from the beauty of this place because you can get to see the raindrops dancing on the top of the pond itself and it just gives that real beautiful uh, worldly connection. Before anyone says, hey, as why don't you get out of your PC then and go outside? <laughs> Ooh, outside, scary. Um, so when you go across the bridge, you can just see that the lovely little... Not too much has been done here. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean, there comes a time where you just don't need to have so much. Just a little bit of this and a little bit of that goes a long way. And you can just see that the banks of the pond... Uh, or the, the whatever area you want to call this, just littered with um, some fantastic bit of foliage, long grass, reeds, little flowers here and there. And then you have little aspects of wildlife uh, around the place. Frogs, goats, foxes, um, eagles just flying around. So it, it has this wonderful area, rocks on the side as well. So it has this wonderful, alive feel to it and that is very important as well it's not just as a little uh, honeybee comes into a shot it's not just somewhere that looks pretty it, it feels alive and like i said there's not too much that's been done here it's not like you know, majorly creative it's just a beautiful classic kind of aesthetic but me personally and i'm no game developer i'm just a regular mere mortal human being but just seeing such a place really kind of like sparks my creative juices. And okay, I'm going to show off a little bit of the agenda of this video as well. Because, you know, this isn't just going to be a video talking about how pretty things are. But when I see something like this, I just think to myself, something quite cool could be done here. Not massive. You don't need to do something grandiose but just something quite interesting could be done here and i just thought to myself if i was going to put a little bit of content here what would i do 
And so what I did is I just looked around the area, tried to get some ideas. Look, there's a little fork in the pond here. Uh, it's not a pond because there's a, but you know what I mean. Uh, river, I don't know. Uh, there's a fork here that goes across two bridges. And we have a waterfall going over there. We've got a waterfall going over there. And uh, it goes out into the bigger body of water. What what could you do? So I said to myself, well, there's some frogs. There's some frogs around the riverside. And I noticed on top of the water, there were some like lily fonts here. So I thought, okay, what about if we had a little mini game? And the little mini game is, let's just say there was an NPC here. Enemy forces looked like um, looked like a mage. And you could go over to that NPC here, and you spoke to them, and they weren't that nice a person, and they polymorphed you into a frog. And then all across the pond here, the river here, there was the lily fonds. And what you had to do as a polymorphed frog was jump and get to the other side where the mage had teleported themselves. You'd angered the, t you'd angered the mage by interrupting them. So they teleported themselves to this rock over here. And this is all scary because you've got the animals, you see, on either side. You've got the stags, you've got the um, foxes. If you go either side, you're going to get eaten. So you have to go across the pond. You have to jump across the lily fonds. So you jump onto the lily fonds. But if you stay on it for too long, for more than a couple of seconds, it sinks and you drown. <coughs> Game over for that. But if you keep jumping and you jump from one and you jump to the other. But it's a trap. Because some of the lily fonds go nowhere. And some of the lily fonds obviously continue the journey. So you might jump onto a lily fond. And then it might, because you jump onto it, cause one nearby, which you think you're going to jump onto, sink. And so you're stranded and your poor little froggy drowns again. And so you work out through trial and error. This is just a little mini game after all. It's not meant to be too taxing but you work out by trial and error which way to go how quick can you jump maybe you put little obstacles in in here as well maybe the fish uh, maybe there's a, a big carp in here that uh, has a bit of a penchant for froggies that tries to jump up and grab you through certain elements so you've got to go through it a little bit quicker now don't get me wrong uh, if any of you have listened to that idea and thought, as that sounds like the, the biggest pile of crap I've ever heard in my life, that's fine. That's great. All I'm trying to say is this area inspires me to think about something creative to do in the world for the players outside of the standard norm of world quests. Just something a little bit fun. And when you get yourself, when you make your way eventually to the the final lily you can tell it's the final lily because it's got the blue flower on it and you you leap up onto the rock where the mage is and the mage is just like oh i'm sorry and then turns you back into your true form again maybe you get a reward of some sort you know uh maybe you get the frog that you were trying that you were tra uh, polymorphed into maybe you get that as a pet a vanity pet but it looks a bit different it's not a bog standard frog it's not one of these kind of frogs. It's just something a little bit different. It's got a little bit of different aesthetic. Maybe when you get turned, it's a, f a red frog with a horde logo. And the alliance get turned into a blue frog with an alliance symbol on the back. Something like that. To me, this area just sparks creativity. And I don't think it takes too much to think of things that can be put in and i don't think a mini game like that would be too difficult seeing how we've uh already experienced in the game how we've been shrunk down in karazan in 7.1 and and things like that i don't think it's out of the realms of possibility that something of that sort of nature 
could be placed within the game. But this area, this area is what caused that. This area is what made me just try and think about something a little bit different. Whether you like the idea or not is neither here nor there. But it just kind of gave me uh, a, a creative spark. And I really like that. The second area, which I don't even have to have a single creative thought because it is all there right in front of my face to see. I'll show you exactly where I am. I am in Zuldazar and I'm up here. Uh, the Alliance can get a little base here, uh, but this is the Horde flight path. So this is the bridge. I love the elevation of Zuldazar, by the way. I love the fact that it has so much elevation and peaks and troughs. And you take the pathway up towards Atal Dazar, which is the dungeon. Now, this is where this area works on multiple levels. Number one, you see Atal Dazar, the entranceway. And if you look through it, you can see the actual dungeon itself. And you're thinking to yourself, ah, I can't get to there. But you can, of course. Because if you go up this side area here... Uh, you can follow it up to the top and then around and it will actually take you to the physical world version of a Tal Dazar. And there we go. So the first part of this incredible area right here for all to see. So not only is a Tal Dazar a dungeon, but it also exists physically in the world. I think those aspects are great. And then if you look down, you'll see the top level mobs who are patrolling and it, they're all over the place. There is actually uh, a world quest here and that mob just there is also a world quest mob. But this isn't what makes this area so special for me. This is wonderful, absolutely gorgeous. But it's here. It's this side road which makes this area unbelievable. Because you come up this side road... And the way that it's been designed, you just sort of think you come across here and... Ah, what a lovely view. What a great view. Again, another sensational waterfall. And then you can see the other side and see that there's actually a little pathway and such. And you're just like, ha, huh, can I can I go around at all? Can I get... No. And then you realise that it's actually a pathway which goes here. And so you go back and you actually realise that this is a hole. And this is very clever. And, and the reason why this is clever... Now, a lot of you may go, yeah, yeah, I saw that. But just let's go back. Here is how you approach it. And this is so very clever because this doesn't look like a hole. You, you'd have to have your camera really sort of angled to see that it was. Most people, I think, have their camera approximately where I am right now. And so that is very discreet. And because of the foliage, just at a glance or a bit of peripheral vision, you may easily miss that. So you can actually go up through there and it takes you round the back of the waterfall, which is just a stunning area to be in. And then the pathway continues down. And the reason why I took my Horde character is... There is one of these forgotten chests here. Now it'd be cool if there was, you know, if the if the chests themselves were a little bit more special. But uh, you know, that's by the by. The actual journey itself was excellent. And then you just realise that there is actually another little pathway which goes up here as well. And you could go round the back you've got a waterfall there there's nothing behind the waterfall but you can sort of just eh, if i just bounce myself get up here to the other side of the dungeon and just access this area here for what reason no reason no reason just to uh just to experience it just to see it um and i just think this whole place if I just go straight in this whole place is just it's breathtaking it's stunning it leaves me speechless at times it's so so beautiful and such a clever way to get here 
a little hidden pathway that you may or may not see if you're not paying that much attention could lead to just such a glorious area to be in. And if you haven't done that, then, you know, you might be like watching this now being like, oh, wow, I did not know. And to those people, yeah, how cool. And if you have experienced it, I'd like to know genuinely in the comments what your kind of thoughts were when you first came across that. Now, I did say, obviously, there is an agenda to this video. And this agenda is about creativity. The message of the video is about creativity. With the last couple of videos that I've done, the critical videos that I've done, to me, it doesn't take too much to get creative in this world. I think the art department themselves, the environmental department themselves, have created such an expansive and gorgeous place that just being in it, just seeing it, should spark some wonderful creative juices within inside of you, especially if you are a content creator. That is your job. You know, you should, by design, be a creative person that has wonderful ideas and thoughts. And to me, because this is such an incredible world, Coltiras and Zandalar, because they are two absolutely incredible continents, there should be so much more that you could do with these wonderful areas. And I'm genuinely hoping that that is the case because for the third time it's just gorgeous it's just absolutely beautiful so again it's another huge huge thumbs up to the art department but it's it's a huge thumbs up for multiple different reasons not just for making things look pretty but your clever design and just the way that you have laid things out, making the process of content creation theoretically much, much easier and more inspiring. Uh, so there we go. I really hope that you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.